Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can code your very own decision tree classifier completely from scratch. Yes, I won't be using any library that has the predefined code for implementing decision trees. I will be using only NumPy and Pandas. If you are new here, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon because in the next video, I will explain how decision tree regression works in great detail. So let's get started. First of all, I would highly recommend you to watch my previous video where I have explained the concept and math behind decision tree classification. Because if you don't know the concept behind something, how can you code that? So please, please watch the previous video and then continue with this one. The video link will be appearing in the cards right now. Okay, let's start the coding. So as you can see, first of all, we have to import the tools. And by tools, I mean two libraries, NumPy and Pandas. After that, we need to gather the data because to train our model and to test it, we need some data. Well, the data that I'm using here is a very, very common data. It's a data set about iris flowers. You can just Google iris data set and just download the CSV file. Well, I have downloaded it previously and kept it in the same directory as of this Jupyter notebook so that I can access it with pandas. There are three types of iris flowers in this dataset. I don't remember the names, but you can see them in the type column of the pandas data frame. The type column contains three values, zero, one, and two for the three respective classes. We have got four features here, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Once we have the dataset, now we can work on the model. To make our life a lot easier, I have used here object-oriented programming. Trust me, to write this kind of machine learning algorithms, if you don't use object-oriented programming, then it will be a nightmare. So if you haven't learned object-oriented programming in Python, then it's a great time to start. Okay, so I have used two classes here. The first one is node class and the second one is the tree class. Well, as the name suggests, the node class will describe the nodes of our decision tree. And as you can see, node is a very small class with just the constructor in it. We will define several attributes in the node class. Those are feature index, threshold, left, right, information gain, and value. Well, if you have remembered my last video, there I mentioned that a decision tree contains two kinds of nodes, decision nodes and leaf nodes. The decision node contains a condition and the condition is defined by the feature index and the threshold value for that particular feature. The left and right are for accessing the left child and right child respectively. You can imagine left and right as the edges of the tree because it will help us to move from parent node to its child nodes. And the last one is information gain. Well, this variable stores the information gained by the split denoted by this particular decision node. And for the leaf node, we don't need any of the previous variables. We only need the value. And what is value? Well, it is just the majority class of the leaf node. It will help us to determine the class of a new data point if the data point ends up in this particular leaf node. Okay, now comes the tree class. And in this class, I have implemented the whole algorithm. So this class will contain the tree building method, entropy calculation method, splitting method, prediction method, etc. First, obviously we need to define a constructor. In the constructor, I have defined three attributes. And these attributes will be used by different functions that I will define inside the class. So the first attribute is root. And we will need this root to traverse through the tree. And then the two attributes are just the stopping conditions, minimum sample split and the max depth. So if in a particular node, the number of samples becomes less than the minimum samples, then we won't split that node any further. We will treat that node as a leaf node. And if the depth of the tree reaches the maximum depth, then also we won't split the nodes further. Okay, then comes 
the most important function of this class build tree function it is a recursive function to build the binary tree using recursion so first of all it is just splitting the features and targets into two separate variables x and y it will make our work a bit easier then it's just extracting the number of samples and the number of features which we can easily get by using the np.shape function in the first if statement i am checking if the number of samples is greater than or equal to minimum samples and the current depth is less than or equal to maximum depth if these two conditions are not met we can't split the tree further then we are using the get best split function to get the best split at this moment please don't worry about the get best split function because i will explain the working of that function in a moment so after that we have got the best split we will check if the information gain corresponding to this split is greater than 0 why because information gain equal to 0 means we are splitting a node which is already pure that is the node consists of only one type of class and that doesn't make any sense after that we are going to create the left subtree and the right subtree respectively please notice that here is the recursion because we are calling the build tree function inside build tree function so first it will create all the left subtrees and then once it has reached the leaf node it will create the right subtrees the important thing to focus on here is we have to increase the current depth variable here okay after the trees are done we need to return a node and this node will be a decision node and as it is a decision node we have to pass feature index threshold the left subtree and right subtree connectors and the information gain by the way as you can clearly notice best split is actually a dictionary that is returned by the get best split function okay after these things are done we need to compute the leaf node so to calculate the leaf value i have defined a function called calculate leaf value which i will explain later and at last we need to return the leaf node and as it is a leaf node we only need to pass one attribute that is the value okay so this was the build tree function now comes the second most important function get best split function so as you have already seen in the build tree function get best split function returns a dictionary so at first i have just defined an empty dictionary called best split and i have initialized a maximum information gain as negative infinity because we want to maximize the information gain and to find that we have to use a number that is less than any other number now first we are going to loop through all the features and inside this loop we have to traverse through all the possible threshold values now the features are real numbers and there exists an infinite number of real numbers between any two real numbers so it doesn't make sense to iterate through every possible real number instead what we do we just traverse through every possible value of a feature that we have encountered in our dataset and np.unique function just returns the unique values of a particular feature so that we can traverse through all the possible values of that feature okay so now we are inside the second loop here first of all we split the dataset based on the current feature index and the current threshold now again don't worry about the split function here i will explain it later okay so at this stage we have got the left dataset and right dataset now we need to ensure that these are not empty so once we know that we have something to work with then i am just extracting the target values that is denoted by y here so after that we need to compute the information gain and to compute that i have used here a function called information gain and don't worry about the implementation now i will explain that and you can see that i have used gini index here for calculating the information gain and i will explain that also okay 
So once we have got the current information gain, we need to check if this current information gain is greater than the max information gain. If it is greater than that, then we need to update our best split. And here you can see all the keys in the best split dictionary. Once the nested loops have completed their executions, we can just return the best split. So here's the split function that I used in the previous function. This function takes the dataset and the featured index and threshold value and splits it into two parts. The first part will go to the left child and the second part will go to the right child. And the way to do this is very simple. I have just used the list comprehensions. As you can recall from the last video, in the left child, we will send those data points that met our threshold condition. So you can see here, I am passing all those rows for which the feature value is less than or equal to the threshold value. And in the right child, I am passing those rows for which the particular feature value is greater than the threshold. Now the function that calculates information gain. This information gain function just subtracts the combined information of the child nodes from the parent node. And you can see I have used here some weights. Well, as you already know, weights are nothing but the relative sizes of the child nodes with respect to the parent node. In the last video, I have mentioned only the entropy as the measure of information. But here you can see two different types of function to measure the information contained in a system. The first one is entropy and the second one is Gini. So let me tell you what Gini index really is. Recall that in the last video, I have shown you the formula for entropy and how it was helping us to calculate the information contained in a state. Well, the Gini index does exactly the same, but here the formula is a little different. So you can see we have removed the logarithm. So now it's just pi square and we are subtracting the whole sum from one. By removing the logarithm, we have actually done a favor to us. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it saves us some computation time because logarithm is a little hard to find than just computing the square of a quantity. Okay, so by using this formula, let's calculate the Gini index for all the five states here. Once we have got the Gini scores for all these states, we can easily find the information gain by using the previous formula. And by doing this, we can clearly see that the second split is a better option for us. And the entropy also agrees that the second split is a better one. Back to coding. The following two functions just calculate the entropy and Gini index for a given array of target variables. You can cross check these two functions with the actual formula to convince yourself that they are doing exactly what we need. After that comes a very little function that calculates the value of the leaf node. Well, as you know, the value of a leaf node is just the majority class present in that particular node. So we just need to find the most occurring element in Y. After that, I have written a custom function called print tree. This will just help us to visualize our decision tree. Well, there is really not much to explain here. This is just a recursive function that prints the tree by following the pre-order traversal. After that comes the fit function. Well, if you have ever done scikit-learn, then you can just see that I am trying to mimic their fit function here. So inside the function, I am first concatenating the X and Y to create our data set. And then I am just calling the build tree function and see here that the root node will be returned by the build tree function. And I will store that into our self dot root. After that, we have a predict function. Well, this function will just take a new data set by data set. I mean the matrix of features and it will return the corresponding predictions. 
you can see that I have used here a function called make prediction, which is defined just below it. You can see that the make predict function takes a node as its parameter. And initially, we are just passing the root node. Coming to the function, if the node dot value is not none, that is, if the node is a leaf node, then it just returns the value. And if it is not a leaf node, then we extract the feature value of our new data point at the given feature index. Then we check if the feature value is less than or equal to the threshold. If it's true, then we record through the left subtree, else we record through the right subtree. Okay, so that was it. We have successfully coded our decision tree. Now is the time to train it and test it. So naturally, first, we need to split our dataset into training set and test set. And for that purpose, I have just used the train test split function. So here I have created an object of the decision tree classifier class called classifier. And I have mentioned minimum sample splits as three and maximum depth as three. After that, we call the classifier.fit function and we need to pass the X train and Y train. And then I'm just printing the tree. So here's the printed tree. So this is the tree that our model has built. Okay, so finally we need to see how accurate our model really is. And for that purpose, I'm gonna use the accuracy score function from sklearn.matrix module. And just look at the result. It's over 93% accurate on test data. And remember, we have coded it from scratch. I haven't used any other module. For me at least, it's so satisfying to see a model performing so well, especially when the model is coded by us from scratch. So that was all for this video guys. I hope you really enjoyed the code. And you can find this whole notebook in the video description. And don't forget that in the next video, I'm going to explain regression using decision tree. Yes, there will be a lot of visuals too. So subscribe to the channel, share this video, and thanks for watching.